Last year on this channel, I took a look at a game called Midnight Racing. While researching for that video, I came across another completely unrelated game with the exact same title. I've been wanting to cover this one on obscure old racing games for a while now, so it's about time we took a look at it. Midnight Racing was released in 2005 as a free download for PC, and it's very clearly trying to write off the success of games like Need for Speed Underground and Midnight Club. I'm not sure who created this game, but I'm pretty sure it was developed somewhere in Eastern Europe, and it's currently being distributed on a website called GameHitZone.com. I took one look at this website, and it immediately set off alarm bells. The first main section links to a bunch of free downloads of popular games that are all coincidentally labeled new, despite most of them being multiple years old at this point. I took a look at the download page for PUBG Mobile, and hoo boy, where to start. For some reason it lists PC system requirements, along with mouse and keyboard support, despite the fact that this is the mobile version according to both the title and screenshots. Even if they're somehow mistaken and this is the PC version, I very much doubt that a game from 2017 would run on a netbook sporting a 1GHz processor and Windows XP. But I'm sure it's fine. After all, this download is free from virus, malware, and spyware. So yeah, in case you couldn't tell, I'm definitely creating a restore point before I let anything from this website touch my computer. With that done, we can install Midnight Racing, and my god was this game a nightmare to get running. The installer has flashing banner ads baked in, so that's a great sign right off the bat. Then when it finishes, it tries to change my default search engine, and puts a bunch of spammy web links on the desktop before immediately opening the browser to GameHitZone.com. After that ordeal, we get to a launcher with yet more ads and a prompt to update the game. I decided to forego the update for now, seeing as I just downloaded this installer 30 minutes ago, and instead go to configure the gamepad. For some reason, this game uses an external mapping program to handle gamepad support and rolls it into the launcher. Can't say I've seen that before. Now we can finally start the game, and it immediately crashes with this cryptic error. I decided to humor the game and install the update it was asking for, just in case that was the issue. After waiting for the world's slowest 47 megabyte download, the game now crashes with a different, even less useful error. After trying a bunch of different troubleshooting steps, I eventually determined that it was the Game Hit Zone launcher, not the game itself that was at fault, and the issue here is most likely due to the launcher no longer supporting Windows XP. That's right, this PC game from 2005 can't run on Windows XP because of the bloatware launcher that it's fused to. I guess that means we're moving over to Windows 7 for this one. Time to create another restore point. I get the game installed on Windows 7, and this time it actually works. Only problem is, you can't see it. This game defaults to a resolution of 600x800, which my capture card can't actually record on this machine. This resolution also can't be changed. Oh sure, there are options for higher resolutions, but the game always reverts back to 600x800 in full screen, even if you have a different resolution selected. There's also no inbuilt option to run this game in windowed mode. I eventually ended up having to use a program to force the game to run in windowed mode, and now the resolution options work. None of them fill the screen properly, though. This mostly full, off-center window is the best I was able to get, and I'm gonna crop everything around the game window for the rest of this video, but just know that this is how I'm having to play the game in order to capture footage. Now with all that out of the way, let's finally take a look at Midnight Racing. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. When you go to start a new game, it'll crash if you're not running it as administrator. Alright, so after fixing that, we're back on the main menu, and I've already noticed two other glaring issues. For one thing, the game's cursor graphic is misaligned with the Windows mouse cursor. It's the Windows cursor the game actually responds to in case you're wondering, and I suspect this may have something to do with the forced windowed mode. We also have two completely blank menu items for some reason, they aren't labeled and clicking them doesn't do anything, but they sure do exist. Upon starting a new game, we've got three cars to choose from and one of the worst interfaces I've ever seen for switching between them. Previous and Next are two separate menu items that you have to scroll up and down to access. No, I don't know why it's like this. I went with the middle car as it seems to have the best overall stats. Taking a look at the tuning menu, we actually start with one upgrade already unlocked, which I install, and then it's off to the first event. 
creatively titled Race 1. First impressions of the gameplay actually aren't horrible. The race starts with a decent enough countdown animation, and there's some actual aesthetic cohesion between the interface design and the game world. I can't say I'm a huge fan of the driving model, but it's certainly better than what I expected. The controls are fairly responsive, and the movement is relatively fluid. Cars feel like they have some actual weight behind them, enough that you can drift them through corners, though that's not particularly satisfying. Everything is still a bit too floaty. The biggest problem with the driving in this game is the turning. Cars have a bad habit of understeering, which led to countless scrapes with buildings and collisions with lampposts. I eventually got used to it, but I had to start letting off the gas about half a block sooner than I'm used to in order to take corners reliably. There's also the issue of the camera. It's not a huge problem by any means, but it has a lot of inertia and is extremely slow to recenter behind the vehicle. This looks really good on tight corners, but it did create a few instances of disorientation and reduced visibility while pulling out of them. Honestly, if the camera speed were increased and the handling were tightened up a bit, the driving here would be right at home in a budget PS2 title. The same could be said for Midnight Racing as a whole, really. The level design isn't terrible, but the map could definitely use some sprucing up visually. Make the scenery a bit more varied, replace some of the low-res textures, and even out the lighting, and this map would totally pass in a console game of the era. Same goes for the car models. They don't look half bad from most angles, a bit more detail in the body, and these models would also be passable for the time. The individual pieces that make up this game at a base level are all fairly solid on their own, if a bit lacking in some areas. It's the high-level game design where things really start to break down. Midnight Racing is one of those rare cases where the end product is significantly less than the sum of its parts. The gameplay here consists of lap-based checkpoint races against three opponents. That's it. That's the entirety of the game. If there are any other gameplay modes, or even the slightest hint of mechanical variety, I couldn't find it in my time playing. The worst part is that these checkpoint races aren't even good. Their design is so basic, yet their implementation is so fundamentally broken in some of the most bizarre ways. The issues all compound on each other, so I'll start with the little things and work my way up. Firstly, the checkpoints themselves. These are weird in that you can't actually drive through them like you'd expect. They always pop out of existence just before you reach the checkpoint gate. I think what's going on here is the actual checkpoint trigger volume is a dome that looks something like this, with a 2D sprite of the gate sitting in the middle. The checkpoint disappears as soon as you touch the trigger volume, which happens well before you reach the visible checkpoint gate due to its size. Honestly, disappearing checkpoints are the least of this game's issues, but it was still a bit jarring until I figured out what was going on. The larger issue with the checkpoints, incidentally, is also to do with their size. While they're not tiny, they're still small enough that you can miss hitting them on these wide roads, something that's fairly easy to do with this game's floaty and slightly imprecise handling. That's a problem, because you have to hit every single one of these things to finish a race. The next checkpoint won't even spawn in until the previous one is cleared. Then there's the opponent AI. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it on first inspection, but you'll quickly realize that it's extremely unforgiving. There's no rubber banding from what I can tell, and the AI never misses checkpoints. Once you fall behind more than a few meters, there's basically no chance of ever regaining your position. You have to drive damn near perfectly, hitting every checkpoint from start to finish and never getting overtaken in order to win a race in this game. That is an extremely difficult thing to do given the relatively small checkpoints and floaty handling. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but I will say that after multiple hours and several dozen attempts, I couldn't finish above last place in the very first race of the game. So far, all the issues I've discussed are somewhat typical of cheaply made racing games, but now it's time to get into the stuff that just completely breaks the game in ways that I did not anticipate. To start with, there are no barriers or signs or really anything keeping you on the predefined track. There's not even a wrong way or out of bounds message. You can literally ditch the race and drive around the city and the game makes zero effort to stop you. This isn't completely unheard of, I seem to recall Midtown Madness allowing a similar degree of freedom in checkpoint races, but that game has an arrow that always indicates the direction of the next checkpoint, 
and it'll change from green to red as you turn away from it. Midnight Racing does have this feature as well, except it actually doesn't work for its intended purpose. The arrow only points to the direction of the next checkpoint within a certain radius. If you go outside that radius, like say you miss a turn and end up a block over, the arrow disappears. Combine that with the fact that everything on this map looks the same, and only one checkpoint is active at a time, and it's not only possible, but downright easy to get completely lost. During my very first race, I went completely off course and didn't even realize it for a good minute, because I'm just so used to racing games pushing you in the right direction. My brain wasn't tuned into where I was going, because it almost never needs to be in these games. Even after I became more conscious of where I was driving, I still went off course and got lost a number of times, which immediately puts you far enough behind that there's no chance of winning. Now, while I wasn't able to make any progress in career mode, I did try out a few other races in quick race mode. As is tradition for these ultra-budget PC racing titles, this mode unceremoniously drops you into a random race with a random vehicle. All the other races in this game are nearly indistinguishable from the first one, and equally impossible to win. Not much else to say here. Midnight Racing might just be the most disappointing game I've looked at on this series yet. The assets and driving model aren't amazing, but they do have potential. There's clearly some quality here, at least compared to other ultra-budget racing titles. The rest of the game, though, feels like a very early prototype or proof of concept. Like, someone had these assets and put together a quick demo to show them off. They went with checkpoint races because those are the easiest to implement. Then someone else looked at the demo and said, good enough, ship it. And here we are. The end result is less a game and more a minimum viable product that exists solely as a means of getting borderline malware onto people's computers. And I think it's safe to assume that the same is true of the entire GameHitZone.com catalog. Seriously. Don't play this game. Not because it's bad, but because it's incredibly shady and could genuinely pose a risk to your computer. I've been pretty careful while making this video, but please do not download games from shady sites like this. This one was relatively benign, but working in IT, I've seen the damage these kinds of downloads can do to your computer on numerous occasions, and it's usually better to just not mess with this stuff in the first place unless you know exactly what you're doing. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know that in my last video I said I was getting kinda tired of doing obscure old racing games, but after taking a break and getting my new capture card in, I decided to just go ahead and finish this one up, seeing as it was already halfway done. Also, I have a Patreon now, which I discussed more in my previous video. At time of writing, I only have one patron, whose name is currently up on the screen. If you'd like to join him in supporting this channel financially, there's a link you can follow down in the description. I think that about wraps it up. Bye.